a person who struggles with an out of control behavior or habit, and you've tried to end this behavior many times, always thinking that you knew what the cause of this behavior was, only to be proven wrong again and again. And now you're a little bit frustrated, a little bit sad, a little bit jaded, because you think that perhaps the reason is much deeper and you're not ready to face it. I'm not here to tell you whether you should visit with a therapist or what you should do, but I'll help you make a better decision by talking about that which you cannot see. And uh, you often hear people using the word subconscious and unconscious. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit, but I'd also like to talk about, to begin that, to talk about suppression and repression. Now, growing up, there are beliefs, ideas, desires, and wants that we have that our society, culture, and religion doesn't allow us to express. And whenever they come up, usually they are biological in nature or sociological in nature, but whenever they come up, something tells us, our mind tells us that this is bad and I must protect you from the consequences that mom, dad, the church, the mosque, the synagogue, the temple has told you the consequences that you will incur if you continue down the line of engaging with this idea or this desire. Your mind protecting you involves you suppressing it. You're suppressing the desire each time it comes up. You are not acknowledging it. You are not even examining it. The program was already given to you. And the punishment for the program, usually as a child, was also prescribed if you engaged in that. And you just believed it. You suppress. As you grow older, you move away from home, you move away from your country, your society, your culture. Sometimes you end up in an environment where those ideas, those desires are constantly challenged. You could also do the opposite and go further into your culture. You could get married. You could start being with somebody who is from your culture or conservative. You could move into a neighborhood, a career where you are surrounded by people who you know hold the same values. And as an adult, the consequences of engaging in these desires and ideas are even higher. There's being ostracized. There's losing the person you love. There's also losing your source of income. And so you suppress it even further. But the point at which that which you suppress becomes unrecognizable is where repression begins. And I want you to understand that an idea, a biological desire, or whatever it might be that tries to express itself and it's not addressed, it's not owned, it's not named, but is pushed deep within you, is going to morph into something else. It's going to come out in some way or the other. And the way that it typically comes up, comes out, is a way that we would describe as deviant. This could be the man who has not had enough sexual experiences. And again, I'm not making a moral judgment here. I'm just helping you gain some awareness so you can make a better decision for yourself. At Elevated Recovery, you are the best expert at yourself. Back to the example, the man who felt that he should have had more sexual experiences, but he had this thing in his head telling him that he should stay celibate, he should stay abstinent, and that sex before marriage or before a monogamous relationship was a very bad thing. He never examined it. He just believed it. Now, if you're one of those people who did examine it and you have a good reason, you don't need to come up in the, in the comments arguing with me because I won't argue with you. It's just you're wasting your time. That often comes up and is manifested as pornography, manifested in pornography. And here's the problem with pornography. What pornography does is pornography takes all that which we have repressed and gives us something which seems like a safe and anonymous place to express that. 
Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think we can be perfect as human beings. I think many of us have no choice but to work with our culture and our religion. And many people do this. I'm not going to change the world. However, the problem with pornography is that it is not regulated. High-speed internet pornography has no limits. And you can access anything at any time with no consequence. It is not something. The effects of compulsively using pornography do not actually manifest themselves on you. You are engaging in a secret behavior. Unfortunately, again, it's just going to be a series of unfortunates in a row. Unfortunately, there are many people who engage in this behavior with pornography to the point that you begin to believe that in some world, it must be socially acceptable because you see all the views and all the comments and you hear about all the stats of the number of people who view pornography. You see the sheer volume of it. You watch amateur pornography and you think this is what everybody is doing. Therefore, I can engage in it. Often, the things you engage in are things that are hurtful to other people psychologically. And sometimes there are things which end up hurting you. If you ever wondered why, whenever you view pornography or certain genres of pornography, you experience shame after that, it is simply a result of your repression. You can't quite put your finger on what it is because it's repressed. If it was suppressed, you'd be able to identify where the shame was coming from. You just have a general feeling of, you know what, this is wrong. Something is wrong with this. And you can't find out what it is. This is what makes it very challenging to end your behavior. You often tell yourself that I need to stop. I need to stop doing this. I need to set boundaries. I need to change this and that. I need to change my lifestyle. I need to become a born again Christian. I need to get married. I need to surround myself with the right type of people. That is only the habit and the lifestyle change aspect of this. Your self-image has to change in order for you to end that compulsive behavior. And for your self-image to change, you do have to start addressing that which you cannot see. Subconscious and, uh, and unconscious. Before I go into this, I want to make it clear that even with some of the latest research, academics still disagree on the difference between the subconscious and the unconscious. Now, there's some very nice definitions out there that make them seem that they are very separate. But let's just bear that as in mind as we move forward, right? I'll give you an example of subconscious. Subconscious is you feel a slight irritation towards somebody in at work who speaks a certain way. You don't know why it is, but every single time this person speaks, you just get really irritated. And then after a little bit of introspection, thinking about it, man, why am I always, excuse me, why am I always irritated when this person speaks? You realize, ah. She reminds me of my stepmom when I was growing up. And my stepmom was always spoken that tone to me. And I was a teenager and I didn't like it. And this is what it reminds me of. And that's the subconscious. It's slightly below the, the conscious. And you can go down there and you can access it. How about the unconscious? The unconscious. I'll give you an example of the unconscious mind. Let's say that you have an, I'll, I'll just use myself as an example, right? I have an aversion to rape scenes in movies. Whenever I see a forced sex scene, rape, um, or some sort of sexual assault in a movie or a series, <clears throat> I get very, very uncomfortable. I have a huge aversion to it. And this feeling is liable to continue for a couple of hours. And... I came to realize, because this, this stuck with me for many years, that this was a result of coming to awareness of some forms of sexual abuse, some forms of rape that were happening around me as a child. I only became aware of them later on in life. Actually, I actually became aware of some of them while I was a child, but I couldn't process it. Trauma. <laughs> so it became something which was suppressed and eventually repressed. Not something that happened to me, just things that were happening around me. And later on in life, when I would, I would start watching these scenes, I became very, very uncomfortable with them. I just couldn't see them. Um, also, another thing was that 
Growing up, I remember my mother calling me into the living room one day, and there was a light, like sexual assault scene on a movie. This was her way of educating me as a young man that this wasn't a boy then, that this wasn't something you should do. And she's like, you see what's happening? Again, I want to make it clear. My mom's a wonderful person. This wasn't an explicit scene. She said that this is called rape and you don't do that. I'm always thankful to her for that. But what I've come to realize um, in my adulthood after working on myself is that my mom teaching me that that's not what you don't do and coming into awareness of all those things that were around me brought up these very, very strong emotions when I watched it being played out. That's unconscious. When for a very long time, many, many years, I could not identify why I was feeling this aversion. So you might have something in your life that's affecting you in that way, right? When it comes to your compulsive behavior, there are some things that are subconscious and you can address them with a little bit of introspection. For many people who struggle with sexually compulsive disorders, most of what they need to get through the final stage of their reboot, which is what we call the maintenance stage, Many of them just need to access their subconscious, and that just involves slowing down your mind a little bit via some form of mindfulness or self-awareness, things we teach within our program. But there are some of you who do have unconscious motivators towards pornography, and those things have to be addressed. In order to build a strong foundation for a reboot, my brothers, my sisters, you have to start addressing that which is suppressed. Habits, lifestyle, self-image, that's what we do here at Porn Reboots. And to move from the habits to the, from the lifestyle piece to the self-image piece, you have to start looking at all those things in your current lifestyle where there is repression. It doesn't mean that, let's say, for instance, you're a man who is married and you realize that, oh man, I didn't have enough uh, uh, sexual experiences and that's why I'm viewing so much pornography. And then you address it and you realize that, man, um, I love my wife. I love my partner, but I desire sexual relationships with other people. It doesn't mean that you should have an open relationship or leave your partner and do that, right? This is the way life is set up. Oftentimes you have put so much into that. I wouldn't call it a sunk cost fallacy because I think relationships are very important things. If you've got children there, a lot of times that's the decision you've made and you have to take responsibility. The beautiful thing about it is that there are many options to working around that so that you can still have a happy life. But I want to tell you this, if you're scared to address something like that, I'm just using that as an example, you're going to keep experiencing the impact of all those repressed ideas and desires. It's going to keep coming up in your life. A lot of people, oh, he had a midlife crisis. He did this. She did this. Women do the same thing too. It is a lot of repressed issues. Sometimes we will repress stuff too, to get married, to have kids. And once the children are grown up, you'll notice this. Once the children get to um, be teenagers, once they graduate from high school, that's when a lot of divorces happen. It's not because they're bored of their spouse. That happens too. But it's also because a lot of those repressed desires start coming up and you're sitting around going like, well, what do I do now? Why do I not feel happy? And it's very easy to look at the thing, the most obvious thing that is keeping you boxed in, which is you think it's your relationship. For those of you, and I'm going off on a tangent here, for those of you who are in a relationship who think that I must, I must tear this down in order to find my happiness, please start doing the work of accessing your subconscious and your unconscious and encourage your partner to go on this journey with you so that both of you can explore it too, because guaranteed your partner also has their issues. Both of you can address this and y'all can come to a mutually beneficial conclusion, right? That's all I got for you. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. This is Porn Reboot Coach in the Porsche. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comment section. And if you want to work with me, if you're just like, man, JK, I just love to have a conversation with you about this. I don't know if I'd work with you. I don't know if I could afford you. But this is something that's definitely affecting uh, me in my life. 
then go ahead and use the link in my bio, the link down here in the comments, uh, send me a DM and let's get started on a conversation. Right. One of the conversations is it, the conversation is either going to be with me or if my schedule is full, it's going to be with one of the strategists or therapists on my team. Let's have a conversation about that. Let's get you to a happier place. All right. Take care.